Hey Jackals, let's make a spinning effect that you can apply to video clips and images. The effect will be dynamic, we can also scale it up or down, and we can also disable the ending of the effect. Now let's get digital. I'll make this effect on an image, but I'll show you how you can apply it to a video clip. So select the image that you have and go into the fusion page. To make that spinning motion, we'll be using the vertex node. And we can select two of them. Well, we can select three of them, but I'll only show you the difference between the two. So the first one and the second one. So let me show you the difference between the two. First, I'll adjust this one, I'll adjust the size. As you can see, once we spin it too much, we get strange shapes. But in this case, if you scale it up, and let me change this to black, this would get cut, but you can adjust how you want the edges to behave, then you would get a nicer looking image. So this is the default, as you can see in this case, but you can simply choose reflect and you'll get a nicer looking shape. So just use the vertex node that you want. In this case, I'll be using this one. Now we need the second vertex node. So I'll simply copy this one and then we'll be using the fast noise to make a mask. And this fast noise will go into the vertex and then we need a dissolve node to blend these two vertexes together. So we'll do a dissolve. And usually if you have a transition, you would have a media 2 going to this point. But in this case, I'll simply add the background and I'll make this transparent. Now this vertex will be used as a mask, but you don't connect it into the mask input. We'll connect it into the map and you'll see why in a bit. First, let's make the animation and adjust the settings that you want. So I'll go to the beginning. The starting angle will be minus 720 degrees and I'll keyframe that. Then at frame 12, this will be half a second in my case because I have a 24 frame timeline. So in half a second, this will go down to zero. So we have a nice spin going on. We'll adjust the size maybe to, let's see, maybe something like that, 1.2. So the whole screen gets affected. Now I'll pin this vertex and I'll basically adjust the angle. So in this case, I'll simply put equals inside this one and drag it onto this one. So if we make any adjustments to the angle at the beginning, this one would be the same. So the mask currently looks like this and now let's adjust the fast noise. So we'll have to play around a bit. Now the first thing that you want to do is to adjust the scale. In this case, maybe let's see, 20 is the maximum and 10 will be the minimum. So let's see how 10 looks like. Looks something like this. Now let's maybe adjust the detail. This will be more visible once everything is combined, but maybe something like that. And we can also adjust the brightness by a bit. We can also make this discontinuous so we get a different kind of fast noise. And we'll also adjust the angle to be the same as this one. So expression and drag it onto this one. Now let's see what we have. And I'll connect it to the dissolve and display the media out. What do we have? Nothing. And that's because we don't have anything in the condition. So in the dissolve node, we won't be using dissolve. We'll be using a gradient wipe because this will be a mask and we still don't have anything. And that's because we're missing the input and output. So we'll be animating this. So in this case, I'll go to the beginning. I'll keyframe this. And I said that frame 12 will be when the animation ends. So at this point, the background will go to one. Now we have something off and that's because you only have to change the inputs. So something like that. Now the animation looks like this. And the only thing that we need to do is to end it. So to do that, we'll be using a time speed node. We'll use a second dissolve. Connect the dissolve like this. This will go to the time speed node and connect this one inside here. Now in the time speed node, we'll set the speed to minus one, which means that any animation that happens will be reversed. 
So in this case, everything that happens here will go in the opposite direction. So in this case, because the animation happens in the beginning, it will happen the opposite at the end. As you can see in this case, the beginning starts as blank, but the ending doesn't. So we have to set the delay to minus 0 0.99. So now we have the beginning and the ending done. The only thing that we need to do is to adjust the dissolve so that it switches between the two. And to do that, we'll simply use an expression. So in the background and foreground, we'll simply switch between the two, but we want to do this dynamically. So right click, make an expression, and let's see what we have. So it starts nice and it ends nice. So this will be the expression. I'll also link it in the description below so that you can just copy it. Now in this case, I've added the transform and if we change the size, it doesn't look like there is any difference than in the edit page, but we'll see if there is any difference when you use different images and videos. So now we have the effect done, but we have to make it so we can actually use it in other video clips and images. So I'll select the transform first, maybe you want to change the size, then the time speed node, maybe you want to access the speed and change this to one, if you don't want to have any ending animation. And then let's say maybe also the vertex, if you want to change the starting angle, we'll see how that goes. Then select all of the other nodes, except for the media in and the media out. Then right click on the last node, go to macro, make a new one. So in the transform, we'll change the size. I'll simply call it scale, maybe from zero to five and the default is one. Then we have the time speed. I'll click on it and change this. So we know what it does. The default is minus one and this will go from minus one to one. Now in the vertex, we can actually set the angle, but I think this might interfere with the actual animation if we make any changes, but we can test it out. So that's it. Now go to file, I'll save as a group. So I have access to the nodes. Now let's see, go to fusion, templates, edit and effects, because this is an effect we want to apply to whole clip. We could use it as a transition, but it wouldn't look nice because the second clip would basically turn on and off and then the second clip would be shown. So I'll go to the effects, change the name, maybe vertex spin, save it. If we're lucky, we don't have to restore the winch resolve inside the effects. So I didn't have to restore it. Now let's find a clip. I'll apply it to this one. This is an image. I'll also apply it to this bear and let's see. So I have a video, I have a video clip here and because it's long, I'll cut it. So this one should behave as we made it and it does. And if you click on it and go to the effects, we have some options here. So maybe we can change this. Maybe I'll set it to 100 minus. So the angle does actually work like it should. So that's nice. I'll leave it to 720. Now we can scale this up or down and we can adjust the no end. So if I go here, we can see that it ends. And if I set this to one, we don't have any ending animation. So you can simply fade it off if you want to like that. Now let's take a look at this one because it's a smaller image, how the size affects it here. So if we change the zoom here, it look a little different than if we change the scale here, as you can see. So that is why I added the transform in this case. Now, if you take a look at this video clip, which is long, does it have the same strutting animation? It does. What about the ending one? It doesn't. Why is that? Well, if you remember, I've cut the clip and this clip is very long. So if I extend it and play it at the end, you can see that we have the animation. But what if you want to have the ending animation here? I'll simply remove the effect, make this a compound clip. Now, if I apply the effect to this clip, we'll have the starting animation and the ending animation. 
Now we can still go to the effects and apply the speed to 1. If we don't want to have the animation, and simply fade it out, just like that. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more DaVinci Resolve and video editing content, and if you want to get today's tutorial files, you can get them by supporting me on my Buy Me A Coffee page. I'm Simon, and until next time, Jackals, keep it digital.